Yeah, you get that. How do you want to do? The audio, do we need that? <laughs> yeah, it is. We'll double check though. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to the Pipe Squatch channel. I'm Zeke, and I've got John with me again. You saw him on the uh, first and only sharing a pipe with friends. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I've done one since. I'm lazy. You should do one like, like right now. That's a good idea. You should have me on the show again. John, you know what? Probably not. I'd like to have you here with me to uh, test out a new tobacco okay. that everybody's testing out, and every time I hear it, it sounds disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Why does it sound disgusting? Because it's fruit flavored. Uh, but so, well, no, because there's some fruit flavored ones that I've tried that are good. Yeah. Um, but we've got some Captain Black grape. <laughs> I have no idea how this is going to taste. I haven't tried it. Um, so far, we packed our bowls with it and it doesn't smell that bad. Doesn't taste that bad just breathing air through it. I don't know what I think about it. I mean, it's great tobacco. Tobacco? <laughs> tobacco. Yeah. It's like tobacco from The Simpsons. Oh, yeah. Ooh, then we need to make our own and get everybody addicted and make millions of dollars. Yeah, we we'll do. Start off with that initial char light and then hand it to him and let him char light and. Honestly, I think the best thing to do, instead of buying um, expensive pipe tobacco, is just to get black and miles and just empty them out <laughs> <laughs> in your pipe. But yeah, that's how you gotta keep it classy. Okay, I'm on char light. It's not bad. It doesn't, like the tobacco fumes before you light it are grapey, but the lighting it wasn't that, there wasn't that much grape to it. What do you think? It's different. Great. Yeah. But it's not like... It does almost remind me... The only problem is it kind of reminds me of a gas station cigar. <laughs> <laughs> like those Phillies Blunts, you know what I'm talking about? No, I don't know what you're talking about. I've, never, know, bought, like I've never bought any of those. Those giant like Phillies Blunts. No, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, that are flavored? Yeah. Flavored. Very flavored. Flavor. Are you making fun of the way I'm top off? <laughs> Damn Ninja Turtles. Oh, it course. reminds me. It reminds me of an incense stick. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. I have a pipe question. So I'm a kind of a pipe noob still. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, um, you know, just just because I don't have a little sticker flattener thing. Uh huh. What's it called? <laughs> I'll just the tamper. My, yeah, the tamper. I'll yeah. just use my the, the tamper on. Uh -huh. I'll just use my uh, finger. Mm-hmm. I've done that. Or that. Is that Get like, a nice little callus going too yeah. for a guitar to play in. That's right. Is that like faux pas or is that acceptable? Hmm. Okay. What are we done for? Because it, you know, the ash doesn't seem to really stay on my finger that well. This tastes like a freaking incense stick. Once you get it going, it's definitely one you could smoke in the house. Like the room note smells kind of like a grape incense. And if you can tell, we're not in my office. We're actually at the they live we sleep studios that's right is that what you call it now i don't know <laughs> the wall of sandbags yeah studios totally real sandbags also mm -hmm. they are they're not fake there's really no need for them in this room but they're not fake <laughs> except for good sound acoustics but this is where you do your podcast not yet but it's where i will be doing the podcast <laughs> This is where you have done podcasts with this background at right. other places before. Right, totally. And you've also, you're going to start doing like just videos where you just sit down and talk mm -hmm. about anything. Yeah. I have a question for you. Okay. I've already made fun of you for it, but they haven't. Your stem. Can you hold that up to the camera real quick for people? <laughs> You got like really close. I did. So the first time I saw John do that, he had bought his first pipe outside the one I gave you. Which is this one? I gave you that one? Mm -hmm. No, I gave you the the one with the gray stem, wasn't it? He, he gave me this one too. Oh, did I? Yeah, he gave me the mm -hmm. corn cob and the Pantera pipe. Way to ruin the story. <laughs> so the first time I saw John do this <laughs> was he had he had a, it was another pipe he bought. It was the, the... Oh, the BC. The BC, yeah. yeah. And uh, you were talking to me, and I saw so you pull it out, <laughs> and the stems curled up. So I made fun of it. I busted his balls for a little while. 
but then it hit me a lot of y'all if you know about the peterson pipes and how they have the p-lip system where they have a hole in the top so it directs the smoke to the roof of your mouth and it cools it off and it gives you a little bit better flavor in my opinion i think it works and i realized he accidentally did the same thing because the smoke's going to the roof of your mouth yeah, there's a lot of pipe stems that do have that angle on that whatever that slant yeah and uh, with it down you know the pipe sort of hangs you know down like that mm -hmm. and i don't know that uh, that kind of bothered me i like you know like the popeye does straight out and basically it gives you leverage on the roof of your mouth so it holds the pipe in straight out if you have like one of these little curved shims like this i like I, I know what you're talking about. I like some of my pipes to curve down like that, mm -hmm. like the Sherlock Holmes one I have, and then yeah, actually, that is sort of has to. The yeah. uh, the um, rat rays that you gave me. Yeah, I love the way that one comes down. It comes out perfect, but some of them, I know what you mean. It's like there's no need for it to have this slight little tilt down. Yeah, but this one <laughs> don't taste the Captain Black grape, like in your mouth a piece of it that wasn't good at all this pipe is my borgen borgen borns i sound like the chef off of the, the muppets burger keepers this is my morgan bones is it the bones yeah it's the bones line uh but morgan pipes makes these it's the stubby ants so if you know devil ants was one of the hatfield mccoys and he smoked that low witty ants pipe and this is his stubby ants but he's got the little lightning treatment. And if you go to his Instagram, he's got some really cool, wow. If you go to his Instagram. <laughs> that was the uh, I'm old. If you go to his Instagram, you can see how he does it. It's like lightning bolts that he actually uses electricity to shoot through there. So it's got a great draw. Every pipe I've gotten from him has been outstanding. I still haven't tried the cigar yet. I've got it, haven't tried it. I promise I'm going to. So where would you say this Pipe tobacco is that price range wise with the other ones. That's cheap. That's really cheap. I want to say it was like four or five bucks for that bag. If could have, that. I could have guessed that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, the the smell is not bad. The taste is not not terrible. I mean, I guess I was being too hard on it saying it, it tastes like one of those old those Phillies blunts that you get at a gas station. But it's, it, it's yeah. a, there's a definite. Uh, difference between like some of the higher end aromatics. I would not pay more than four or five dollars for it. <laughs> yeah, no. But actually, you know what this would be good for? Somebody you're wanting to get into pipes for good. Yeah, because it's it's mild enough. It's the flavor is not real fruity. I mean, it, the smell is when you first open it up. The smell is fruity, but when you actually start smoking it, it's not at all. Right. I, mean, I can, yeah, I can taste it, but yeah, it's not bad. I know it's real popular for yabos. Get another box open. I got a nice big box here. Make sure I don't show my address. Let's see what I got in here. Well, unless you want people to know your address, you don't want them to come to your house. Um, no, I just don't want them sending me free stuff. My address is... <laughs> I'll tell you his address. He lives at 742 Evergreen Terrace. What is that number? Why do I know that number? Springfield. That address is in Springfield. Tennessee? No. Springfield Simpsons land. Oh! <laughs> Alright. I got a pair of uh, basketball shoes. So, there's the box open. You, you haven't done a podcast since you moved here. Hmm. But you're planning on doing one. Right. Gotcha. And when you, when you do your podcast, you just stick it on YouTube or do you have it on iTunes and YouTube? iTunes too? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And when they look it up, they just look up Talking Lead, right? Um, I think they look up. <laughs> we like shooting? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's where we go to. Yeah. No, it's, uh, it's just. The Gun Culture Radio. That's right. Yeah. And it confuses some people because, I don't know, maybe it wasn't the best name. I thought it was genius at the time. Because I was like, yeah, I'm going to call it Gun Culture Radio because our entire culture is essentially propped up by weapons. You know, because you think, think about this, our culture and laws, meaning like our laws and the way that we live, our societies and all this kind of stuff, has been mostly determined by whoever had the best weapons. Right. You know, that's what, they, what forms the imaginary lines and the systems and all that kind of stuff. You know, the laws, that's what keeps laws from just being words on paper. Right. 
So that's where I'm kind of coming from when I say gun culture. You know, gun culture radio, it's like our entire culture is a gun culture, you know, kind of. That's what I was attempting. I don't think it really came through necessarily all that well. No. You know, because some people <laughs> are like, why aren't you talking about guns more, you know? Well, I got it, but, but only because you told me what it was. Right. I should probably, exp- I should probably like do like a trailer for the podcast and explain it or something. A trailer for the podcast? Like a, you know, like people do on their, on their yeah. channels. Lots or, of explosions. Yeah. Hot chicks running by. Right. Gotcha. Right. But not looking at the explosions, that's important. Yeah. Or walking away real slowly. Right. And acting like they don't affect you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to have the guy going, in a world. <laughs> before everyone. In a world without cool voices. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, this is just tobacco. No, it's a good podcast. If you haven't checked it out before and you just want to check it out on YouTube, just go to the Hickok 45 and Sun channel. Um... And if not, and you have iTunes and you know how to use podcasts, go and look up the Gun Culture podcast. Ignore all the episodes that I'm on. They're scary. Yes. They're very painful. And also, if you want to, to listen see to. Zeke's podcast, you can go to the first 130 episodes of Talking 105, Lead. 105, I think I made it. No, no, maybe it was 120, 130. Okay. Of Talking Lead. Yeah. It's better now, though. <laughs> Now, I've got some other cool stuff I'm going to be doing. Kind of like you were talking about the weapons mm-hmm. and how, you know, whoever had the best weapons got to make the rules or whatever, the culture right. based off that. I don't, uh, there, there are other weapons I enjoy. 1772, 1772, sorry man, I know you're not that old. 1972 Wood's been on YouTube. He gets into a lot of blade weapons. He does some firearm stuff and does a lot of pipe stuff. Uh, he and I have been having a lot of conversation about uh, knives. I have a proof of a slip up of not being safe. Actually, it's I was being very safe. You and I were talking about this earlier. Mm-hmm. Zip ties are the most dangerous things to cut open in the world. Totally. That's why they make those little, but they never have them around, but yeah, those little snip things. Mm-hmm. Them, but. but I wasn't using snips. I was using a brand new Spyderco knife and oops, five stitches. <laughs> Well, I, I just, there's someone in my distant family um, that was cutting, op- not a zip tie, but it was like kind of a similar concept. It was like a uh, luggage tag, mm-hmm. and it was like a, uh, I don't know, it was like a really heavy duty one or something. And he was trying to cut it with the, like the old school pocket knives that people don't really carry anymore. Yeah. I'm talking about the little thing you gotta pull out, you know? Oh, yeah. And uh, he was trying to cut it with one of those, and he was cutting towards the web of his hand. Oh. And he cut like that deep, like all the way down to the web of his hand. Well, and I was even being safe with it because the direction I had it, if I would have been watching, it would have just popped straight up. Right. But I got distracted and as I looked up is when the zip tie popped and it went right in my thumb. Yeah. Not smart. Be safe with your blades. But yeah, I'm gonna start showing some more blades. Uh, there's actually some cool medieval weapons that I've ordered and got over the holidays. Christmas was kind of good to me on the weapon side, so I'll show some of that stuff. Pipes. I got some new pipes I'm going to talk about. And I promise I'm going to start putting out a little bit more videos. I know it's been slow the past couple of months, but it's been crazy. Been working a lot. And uh, I will get back to it. <clears throat> and I just realized John has an unlicensed picture of me on his microphone over there. Oh yeah, I did. It's, uh, I'm it's gonna have, uh, to have a talk with somebody. It's a picture of Sasquatch, mm-hmm. but if he was space. Oh, space Squatch. Yes. Space New Squatch. YouTube t- channel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's also something that he and I have in the works that's coming soon that is uh, going to be absolute crap. Uh, what's your thoughts on it? Uh, you know, it's it's you know like you said it's um, you, know, you covered ninety percent of it's crap. Mm-hmm. But there's a 10% that could be kind of not crap. Mm-hmm. And that's but, what I'm hoping for. You know, we were talking, and so many people try so hard to make good stuff. And they spend so much time and effort on making something amusing or entertaining or funny or good. And we thought it'd be easier to just do something that was crap. And so far it has been. But that'll be coming in the next, I'd say, month or so. Yeah. Well, we'll say that, you know, kidding aside, not that you're kidding about that, of course, you know, we would spend a lot of time developing and 
an idea that we're excited about and make it intentionally crap. Yes. You know, there's no question that we would do that. Uh, there will be a lot of effort put into this crap. Yeah, totally. Uh, but one thing that, <laughs> that I find interesting, though, is you know, with, like with the experience on, I've had on YouTube and, and everything, it, you know, it's a lot of times it's like something that's very simple and that is very, um, what's the word? It, it's very like aware of what what people want without mm -hmm. all the the BS that people try to generate to push something through. Right. Like uh, like YouTube channels like we we're talking about sort of like PewDiePie for example. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, it's not my cup of tea. I don't really watch it. Occasionally, I'll catch one of his videos. But what's interesting to me about him. He's the biggest YouTube channel, and his production values are just like simple, super simple. He's know? either playing a video game or and he's he's in this room that's just white. It's got some stuff on some shelves and that's it. Yeah, there's like no real thought went into the set, like you know, like I did here, of course. Um, and the audio is not even that good, but he says it's the biggest YouTube channel because mm -hmm. it's all about the content and the connection right. that he has with his audience. You yeah, know? And I think in business it's the same way. You know? and I, I think that's the coolest thing about YouTube is the connection. And I think that's why it's doing so well versus some major networks. Right. Not all. There's still a lot of networks putting out good content. But, you know, YouTube is a lot of, a lot of people are going there. When I'm, you know, I was joking, just making a BS. Yeah, but, but when I went to buy these shoes, one, it blew my mind because, geez, when I played basketball, it was high top or low top, what color do I want? And that was it. Now they have technology for the body type you are, the type of player you are, your position, if you're a speedy, cuttier player, if you're a more explosive, jumping player. I mean, there's so much that goes in these shoes that I had to go to YouTube. And I started watching reviews for all these shoes. And then I realized, you know what? This is a bunch of five, six, skinny, young, 20 year old guys reviewing these shoes and there's no 40 year old tall fat guys doing these reviews. So I might start reviewing some shoes too. Might have him join me. Not saying he's fat, but he's tall. I'm heavy. He's heavy. The beard does it. Yeah, that's where most of my weight is. Mm -hmm. Beards are pretty heavy. They are. Yeah, I weighed my beer the other day and it was, I think, about 15 pounds. In the mental heaviness. Oh, yeah, totally. They make you smarter. Yeah. And it, stronger. Yeah, what it does... And is, chicks dig them. Right. And what it does is like... And dig them, dig them. Do you like, remember dig them? No. The little frog from dig em Snacks? No. Okay, continue. I was, about to, <laughs> I was about to enlighten you. A lot of people don't realize this, that your intelligence is not actually the size of your brain. It's the location to your central axis of your head. And when you have a big beard, your beard hairs are connected to your brain, and, and the longer your beard is, the more it compresses your brain down towards your central uh, axis. Is that why when I'm doing this, when I'm thinking, I come up with better Yeah, because you're pulling your brain down to your central axis. Uh, so, okay. Yeah. And that's why I like those, uh, you know, great philosophers and, like, really smart people. They have those, like, massive, mm -hmm. massive beards. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's totally And the they also have pipes. Right. Pipes also, yeah. Pipes, um, what is it again that pipes do that make you smarter? I, I forgot. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. They slow you down. They make you breathe slower. It's kind of like a meditative kind of breathing. and It, it keeps you focused on stuff. And I think the nicotine level, like, if you smoke cigarettes, your nicotine level is like, whoosh, it's right there. Right. But it's just like a slow, mild nicotine level that has this little stimulant going on. Right. What? You give a real answer. That's not what I was expecting. It, it <laughs> makes you look smarter. <laughs> I'm, I would much rather get an answer to a question with somebody with a pipe than somebody without. Yeah, that's true. I don't know, it's growing on me a little bit, but... I don't love it, to be honest. I will say the deeper down I've gotten into the bowl, it's getting a little cigarette ashy. Like it kind of has a little cigarette ash flavor to it. Yeah, I think I could see that. I maybe I haven't gotten there yet. I packed mine pretty full. Cool. <laughs> but back to the trying to get somebody to quit smoking cigarettes and switch the pipe. Yeah. That would be a good thing. That's true. That would be actually a decent 
transition, you know, mm -hmm. go from cigarettes to a pipe, and then, um, you know, you'd probably be smoking a pipe a lot, I would imagine, if you're going from cigarettes to a pipe, but then you can just kind of gradually, you know, s slow that down. And kind of frequent. a... Oh, it, mm. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to sneak. I had to sneak another you know, word. And to follow up on a video I did on one of my quick hitters, the uh, the one I did about can pipe smoking help you quit cigarettes. A lot of people are like, no, I don't think so. Eh, it's a good idea. I have had a ton of people, like four, tell me that they actually have switched to pipe smoking from cigarettes and have not had the craving at all. And I, I, I meant to ask him if they were actually inhaling the pipe tobacco or not, because I don't, he doesn't. But from what I understand, they're doing it the way I said to and other videos have said to, and I'm, they're doing well with it, so yeah, that's a good thing. I would say that you're probably inhaling a little bit of it just from being in the air. Second hand and everything. Yeah, getting in your nose. Well, one thing, I've never really respected the fears of secondhand smoke. This is and this is why I don't think it makes sense to me. Now with kids or something that's different. I'm talking about just like other adults being around an adult occasionally right. they're smoking. People can smoke for like fifty years mm -hmm. sometimes and not have any issues. Just because you smoke for decades and decades doesn't mean it's like guarantee you're gonna get cancer. Mm -hmm. It increases your you know, likelihood, of course. And it does reduce your health. But you mean to tell me that someone could smoke for 50 years and not necessarily have any major health issues, but yet just being around someone that's smoking a cigarette occasionally can cause problems? Does I think there, there's people that are more susceptible to getting diseases, just their body makeup and everything. Yeah. So I think it boils down to if restaurant example, right? Right. Back when, I mean, gosh, what, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, you could smoke in some restaurants. Yeah. Still can in a few. So those you're days. taking away, let's say the person three booths down from you is one of those people that's susceptible to, you know, they smell a cigarette and they have lung cancer. You're taking away that ability for them to avoid it by you having your pleasure at your booth. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, I get that. So, because yeah, people's bodies are all different and they're susceptible to different things. I mean, even us smoking the pipe, <clears throat> I haven't had any issues breathing wise. I've actually been getting back in shape. You can't tell, but I'm, I'm working on getting back in shape. Um, and have not had any cardio issues by smoking it. Uh, to where when I was doing the vape thing, I actually did. I mm. was sucking wind like crazy. I've had a couple messages. Well, oh, dude, you hadn't had a video. Did you quit smoking pipe? No. It's interesting how on these corn cob pipes, because they're not designed, of course, to last, you know. Mm. But this one's lasted a long time. I've probably put, you know, 40 bowls through this thing. I mean, I've smoked it quite a bit. But it has this, um, like, ripple effect, mm. like, all the way down through. We where you actually like, see the corn rows. Yeah, where there's, like, these rings, yeah. basically. Yeah. And I'm guessing that's how, like, the where it's burned, mm -hmm. you know, different various points and stuff. Yeah, I've seen some corn cob pipes that are almost black on the outside, and people are still smoking them, uh, going down on them. Huh. So, uh, they're supposed to only last like three months mm -hmm. if you smoke it occasionally. But this one I've had for like six months, I think. But Missouri Meerschaum, every one I've had has been aces. I, 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 honestly, I haven't seen any besides Missouri Meerschaum. Yeah. So if you know of other brands, I don't know, but. Everyone I've seen and I've had, it's still going. Yeah. No issues. Yeah, you can get them uh, smooth like this or rough. Mm -hmm. I, I like the smooth ones, I think. My favorite is my big uh, General MacArthur one. Oh, dude, I got one of those. It's actually it was in, in that, that box over there. Yeah. Um, couldn't get it to, to really smoke. I mean, I don't really? Know. Yeah, it just wouldn't really work right for me. You gotta have a good big flame. <laughs> Get on <laughs> yeah, guitar is fun. I just, I don't know that I would ever be motivated enough to like get to the level that you have to be to actually be in a band that has a chance for success. Well, and I've been in, you, you've been in a band too before. No, I've never had. I thought you had. Never even played with a band. Oh, I've been in one band and, no, take that back, junior high. 
Junior high, I was in, <laughs> I was in a band. Oh, I was in like school band. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So in junior high, well, I wasn't like you talking about like marching band, school band, or no, like regular, friends? like no, like regular in a classroom playing drums band. Oh no, we didn't do that. We had like a, a metal band in junior high. It was me, a friend, and his cousin. First, it was me and my friend, and I was going to be the drummer. And his cousin was a better drummer than me. So they're like, hey, why don't you learn how to play bass? <laughs> <laughs> and then I was eh, on bass. It was like, hey, why don't you sing? <laughs> and we never did anything with that. We just claimed we had a band. And then uh, when I got older, uh, actually it was after college, I was in a band um, that we never really did much with it. Uh, the, the guy that put it together did. He went on to be a successful songwriter for a lot of big groups. But I was the singer for that. And it's, yeah, it may have been the reason we didn't do much anything. <laughs> it's fun, I, I enjoyed it. The rehearsals are fun, but now that I'm getting back into playing, I'm just doing it, kind of like what you said, yeah. I'm just doing it for me. Right. There's no dreams of making it. There's no dreams of a recording deal. I'm just doing it for my own personal pleasure, and it's so much more fun. I'm not worried about, oh God, what is this guy? Is he think, am I on tune? Am I on beat? Yeah. I'm just, I probably suck, but <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> yeah. I enjoy it, and it, it's a whole different thing. So if you've ever been into music and you quit because you just didn't make it, try it again without being the older, pressure. without the pressure. Yeah. And it's a whole different feeling, completely different feeling. Um, I gotta link you up with, seven, I almost said 1772 Woodsman again. 1972 Woodsman, he's a great guy. He's He plays guitar too. That's it's good. pretty good. But uh, it's kind of the same thing with him. It's just his thing. Yeah. And it's, it's so weird how there's pressure when you're younger and you wanna make it. Right. And then when you're older and you just kinda wanna have that making music for you thing, and even if it's garbage, it's still, there, there's something relaxing. It's kind of like having a pipe. Yeah. Well, so there's that thing where it's like, I'm not getting good fast enough. Yeah. And then that pressure is like, oh, I don't know, you can't even, I don't want to do this. Yeah. You know? Yeah. What's interesting about some of these YouTube guitars, now, you know that some of them, like, tried to make it and sort of failed, and, but were like, Okay, well, almost like almost like the failed athlete PE coach kind of thing. Like, mm -hmm. well, this didn't work out, but you know, I make some YouTube videos. I know stuff about guitars. I can play guitar, and then some of them ended up making it, doing that. You know, like, yeah. like Jared Dines. I don't know his history per se, you know, but that guy has become almost as big as, you know, a lot of bands. It's not a huge yeah. band, but a, a decent sized band. Mm -hmm. You know, like I think he has he has a band now or whatever and, and you know, he can tour around and attract a lot of people because he has like 1.5 million subscribers on YouTube. Yeah. And it's just from making funny videos, teaching people how to do different things. He's got a lot of funny stuff. He does, yeah. There's a lot of funny guitarist out there. Yeah, Rob that, Scallion is really good. Uh, uh, He's very talented. T. Berry, too. what's it? Terry oh, Berry. yeah. Um, Steve. Steve. Ter yeah. Terry Berry, Terry, T. Berry. Terry Berry. Stevie T, as what Stevie they call T, him. yeah. <laughs> Younger guy, glasses, and I'll admit, the first time I watched him, I was like, oh my god, this kid's annoying. Yeah. But then once I kind of got his humor, I, I crack up laughing every time yeah. I see him now. Have you seen the video, the auto-tune in real life? Video? Yes. <laughs> yeah. God. Yeah, he, he's crazy, man. And he's a talented musician, too. Mm hmm The album that you played for me is actually pretty good. So... Before we run too long and everybody's like, what the hell is this video? Cap and Black Pipe Tobacco. Would I buy it again? Mm, probably not because this bag will probably be this full around my house if somebody wants to try it out. Pipe smoking and I'll get it. But would I try it again in my own pipe? <sighs> I don't know. I don't want to say no, but I'm probably going to. I'll say no. <laughs> it's it's not horrible, but all the different options I have out there, why would I do this? Yeah. You know, some of the English is, you know, you and I have talked about this. 
I like very little aromatics. There's a few that I like. One that I recently got into, because I think somebody on YouTube actually said something about it. Uh, if I forgot who you are, I'm sorry. But uh, it's Cult Conspiracy, and it's awesome. It's like an aromatic, but it's got a little dark hint to it, and I can't figure out if it might be a little Latakia or whatever to kind of give it a little English feel to it, but yeah. it's really, really good. It would even exist. Yes. It is a conspiracy from a cult. With Frogmorton, uh, I got hooked on the regu regular Frogmorton, and then I bought the Cellar, and holy crap, that's all. Have I let you try that yet? Mm-hmm. It's got these little staves of wood from, like, I think they're whiskey casks or whiskey barrels. And they stick it in the can with it, and it ages with that. Oh, wow. Oh, it's awesome. Wow, it may be good. one of my favorites right now. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, there's so many other options you can get for just a few dollars more. That yeah, well, like this. I really have been into this uh, bullseye <clears throat> stuff lately. You probably can't see it from here. But it's called bullseye, and it's... Shaped like a bullseye or a galaxy. Oh, that would have been a cool name. They could have called it a galaxy. galaxy. But that's a cool one. And then um, I then picked up some Navy Flake. I haven't tried it yet. But, no. you know, the marketing worked on me. I was like, Pipes, Navy. It's a chunk. You got it because of the Navy name? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I did. All right. <laughs> Till next time. <laughs> Keep your pipes loaded. Slow down. Philosophize and enjoy life. I agree. Yay.